<clears throat> What's up, guys? Hopefully, you're doing really well today. I've just been super excited and I've been really anxious because I've been wanting to make a video for so long. It's been a long time since I've actually made a full on video for YouTube, for Instagram, for wherever. Like, it's just been a little while. So, I figured why not make a quick little video talking about my five favorite film cameras of all time. Now, these are not cameras that like I wish I had because I have no preference or I have no experience using cameras that I really want and I don't have. These are just going to be my personal five favorites. Yours are going to be obviously a little bit different, but these are the five favorite ones that I have in my collection. So let's go ahead and get started. So guys, we're going to start small and go with the Yashica T4 Super D. Now this is one of my favorite cameras just because it's so nice and compact. It's a little chunky, yes, for a point and shoot, but it's still a really nice camera. So you can take this anywhere and take really good photos. It's also weatherproof, so you don't have to worry about getting some rain on it, getting some dust in it, and anything like that. It's all sealed up, so it's a really heavy duty camera. It's probably gonna outlast cameras such as the Contax T2, T3, and such, and you can find these for less than half the price of those cameras, so it's a really good deal. I got the nice like champagne looking one. I usually like black, but I found this one for such a good deal, so I just jumped on it. Uh, regardless of the color, but it's a really nice camera. I love it. It has a Zeiss lens on it. It's a 35 3.5 It's not the fastest lens out there, but it's still a really nice lens to go out and take nice photos Captures great colors really good contrast if you're shooting black and white You don't have to worry about not getting great shots because it's a point-and-shoot camera This thing will handle anything you throw at it and laugh in the face of every kind of weather All right So the next camera that I'm gonna go into is my Nikon f3 now this thing is a tank like it's an amazing camera. I love this thing so much. Uh, I was never really a big Nikon fan, to be honest with you guys. I only jumped into Nikon film cameras because I've known how great a quality this camera is. I knew that this thing was built solid. You can buy different prisms so you can look at it in different ways. You can get like a wastefinder prism or this HP prism, which is like my favorite. Um, it's just a solid camera all the way around. I love it very much. It, like I said, it's a tank, so you can like bump this on anything and it'll probably break whatever you're bumping into. Uh, it's super good. Uh, you can find these for such a good deal nowadays. So I actually ended up finding this F3 and an F3T for the price of probably a really nice F3 by itself. It also worked out because I was going on a trip to Paris and London about a few weeks after I bought these cameras. And I took them on and they looked fantastic. All the images that I shot on film and with these cameras just turned out so good. They were really nice and contrasty. I had the 50 1.4 and the 24 1 or 2.8. And it, they both worked really well. So I love these cameras so much. I don't think I'll ever get rid of these because I found them for such a really good deal. This has a built-in light meter inside of it and it works flawlessly. I haven't had any issues with it so far. And even if you had issues with this, because I know a lot of people myself included really like fully mechanical cameras if something went wrong with the meter i can still technically shoot this at i think one sixtieth of a second so that's not too bad if you really need to if you really want to go out and shoot you're limited to 100 one sixtieth of a second but you at least have the option to go out and take photos you don't just have a really nice looking paperweight right there so that's a really good thing and i really like this camera because of that reason if you're looking to get into film and you only have the budget for like one camera system and one camera in general, I would highly recommend this one because it's just so solid. It's always going to be there for you. It's never going to let you down unless you completely destroy it by dropping it, by doing some weird thing. Um, these things are going to last you a long, long time and you'll probably never need anything else. You just need this in a 50 or whatever your preferred focal length is and you're good to go. This is the only camera you're probably ever going to need. All right, so now we're gonna jump into specialty cameras. Now this is gonna be a camera that many people have. It's, well, let's just say it's a very controversial camera. There's a lot of people that really love this camera and there's a lot of people that really despise this camera. And then there's me in the middle, which kind of accepts the flaws and takes it with all the goods and the bads um, and so forth and whatever, all the good things and bad things. You know what I'm talking about, but it is the Contax G2. Now, this is an amazing camera, in my in my opinion, because it's just built really tough. It feels super solid, so it doesn't feel like it's a cheap camera, because it isn't by any means. You're going to find one of these for about $1,000, depending on where you find it, and 
it's going to be worth the money. I know there's a lot of people that say don't buy them because they're at hazard of being bricked. You're going to break it if you just bump it and then it's not going to work anymore. But really, they're super solid unless you're really banging into things. And if you're really not careful with the gear that you have, this thing's going to work fine. You're not going to have any issues with it. If you find a good one, it's going to stay good. Just take care of it. That's it. Now, there's going to be people that say, well, there's still a chance of it breaking later on in the future regardless. That's true. But that's going to be the same with anything. Nothing is going to be built to last indefinitely. Things are always going to break. And that's just the way things are, you know. Until that happens, you're going to be enjoying using this camera all the time. Like 100%. Now, with that being said, it's not the perfect camera for everyone. Obviously, there's no such thing. But it has really nice features. It has autofocus. So if you're someone that wants to walk around and just take shots really quickly, if you want to be a street photographer and you just you don't want to mess with like zone focusing and all that good stuff, buy one of these. Really great. It's also really solid. Has a shutter speed setting up to one four thousandth of a second, which is really great because not a lot of cameras have that. It also shoots four frames per second, which is amazing considering that this is film. Now that might not sound exciting to some people, especially when there's Sony's and other cameras shooting at 20 frames per second nowadays. But when you consider that this is shooting film, a physical medium, like a physical media, it's like sliding and taking each frame and putting it across the, the pane where it's actually taking the photo. That's pretty incredible. You know, my Sony a7R2 shoots at five frames per second and it's digital. That's ridiculous. That's appalling compared to this. Like that's a digital camera worth a couple thousand dollars when it was new. And this is a film camera worth a thousand. Yeah, it's, it's, it's crazy. <sighs> All right, stepping it up quite a bit. We're going to go into medium format film. Now, this is a camera that I've wanted for a long time as well. And I've been lucky enough to call it mine. It is the Hasselblad 501 CM. Sorry, I turned it the other way. Here it is. It's a 501 CM. Now this is a medium format camera shooting six by six film negatives, shoots 120 film, so it's awesome. It's also like very beautifully built. I love this like sleek, like boxy design. It's technically just a rectangle, but it's still an amazing rectangle. Right now I have a very stubby, very long nosed 50 millimeter F4, I think. I think it's an F4, um, really good really good lens. All the optics for this were made by Zeiss. So you know the image quality is going to be super good. Like it's going to be amazing. It's going to knock your socks off. The backs are removable. So if you have different film that you're going to be shooting, say you're going to shoot black and white on one and color on the other, you have that possibility. I did that on a recent trip to Zion and they worked fantastic. Um, and especially just because Ansel Adams shot with the Hasselblad for a long time and just having one of these is a major, major goal accomplished for me. Um, and taking it back to Yosemite and shooting there was just surreal. Like it was a shooting experience that I can't really put into words. It was just, a, it felt like it was going home, like it went home and it felt at one with nature. I'm gonna get too sentimental if I keep going into it. So I'm just gonna leave it at that. This is a beautiful shooting experience. It's a beautifully made camera. All right, so my last camera is, well, I don't know the word. I guess, I guess we can use cliche. It's a very popular camera. It's a very high demand camera that pretty much everyone wants. It's one of the kings of Instagram or social media. If you're a film photographer, if you're wanting to get into film photography, you probably have this as a goal at some point in your list. Like if you have a list of cameras that you want, this is, has to be, on your list like it just it just is but here we go here we go it is the Leica M6 now this is the old classic M6 so this is a 0.72 viewfinder it doesn't have uh, a bigger dial like here it doesn't have the TTL it's not the TTL version it's the classic so it's a 7.2 it's a 7.2 viewfinder magnification so the frame lines are set for like a 35 mil I think that's what it's closest to or a 28, I think it's 28. Um, but it's a beautiful camera. It is electronic in that it takes a battery to power the light meter, which is great. It's built amazingly. It's very sleek, as you can obviously tell by Leica. 
I do have a hand grip on here that makes it a little bit bulkier, but it's still beautiful. And let me say, I know a lot of people are gonna be like, well, of course you're gonna like it. Of course you're gonna want it because it's a Leica M6. That's the most popular camera out there right now, probably. But even beyond the hype, like this was eight years ago where when it was still a popular camera, but people still had opinions that it wasn't the best camera out there. And it for sure isn't the best camera. Let me just break down the walls right now. It's not the best camera out there it's not the end all camera you're not gonna go out and with this camera and take the world's most amazing shot automatically it's gonna take some time like every camera is and it has its own quirks but that being said it is my favorite camera just the simplicity of it just the way it handles especially with the grip now it just feels amazing looking through the rangefinder and adjusting your focus and just being one with the camera it sounds very cliche but this camera being at the top of my list is cliche in and of itself so i think it cancels out it just feels like photography it just feels like you're part of the photograph and i'll it's just there's no other way to explain it besides it being an amazing camera so that's pretty much it i mean there's so many things i can say about it and i will do it in depth review of each one because i know i didn't really say too much about each camera just wanted to list them off really quickly but they're amazing cameras every one of these cameras are in my collection for a certain reason if you have any questions for any of these cameras i'm happy to answer them if, especially if you're looking for a particular one that you want to buy i'm definitely here to answer any of your questions make sure to leave a thumbs up if you like this video if you like any of the cameras that i listed if they were on your list or if you want them let me know which one you're looking for um, I want to know what you guys are interested in. And then also leave me recommendations for new stuff to look into, what your favorite cameras are, all that good stuff. Yeah, and also don't forget to subscribe. I really would love it if you guys would subscribe. I'm just starting out and would love your feedback. I would love your support. Thank you guys so much. Also, make sure to check out my IG. My Instagram is Coyote Films, where I post a lot of gear pics, a lot of gear-related content. Check it out if you're into gear. If you're into technology, if you're into, you know, you know, starting into interior design with these shelves behind me, um, looking good, <laughs> make sure to check that out. So see you guys on the next video. I'm Frank Ramirez. Peace out.